I started a long time ago trying to remember things, especially what people say to me. Mr. Sam, former Texas legislator, U.S. congressman, and Speaker of the House of Representatives, a post he held longer than any other in history. It's an honor that never came to any other American. Evidence of his work is all over Texoma, and from Lake want... Texoma to farm to market roads and rural uh, electrification. Long before the age when it seems that every ex-president opens his own library, friends of Sam Rayburn built an institution in Bonham. One of those friends was also a congressional assistant from Ector. Mr. Raven called me in the office one day and he said, H.G., when I get the, the library built, he said, I want you there. And I said, Mr. Speaker, I don't know a thing in the world about library work. You need to get somebody that's, that, that's a librarian. I don't know anything about library work. And he said, well, take some courses. H.G. Delaney has roamed the library's corridors ever since the doors opened. Well, I've done this, I've done, done this so many a time. <laughs> when we showed up for our visit, Delaney wanted little to do with a story about him. Uh, that's a beautiful statue of Mr. Raven. Instead, he preferred to talk about the subject he knows best. <laughs> you don't have to get me. Let's get what's here. This library was built, of course, during Mr. Raven's lifetime, you know. And it was opened in 1957. The groundbreaking was in 1956 in December. These are original cartoons from famous newspapers all over the United States about Mr. Raven's death. They named a submarine after him after he died. It's a nuclear submarine. Delaney went to Washington in 1951 to work as Rayburn's assistant. He spent the days taking notes and making sure citizens' letters and inquiries were answered in due form. And I was told that he was one of the best typists that ever was. You can't look at H.G. Delaney without also looking at Sam Rayburn. And Speaker Rayburn, the people that he surrounded himself with, he was very particular. He wanted people of the utmost integrity. He wanted them to be loyal. But he also wanted people who had a sense of community and understood the people from where he served and how to serve them and there was no better person than H.G. Delaney. So from Mr. Sam to Mr. Delaney, who at 87 years old shows his love for the man in the library to most anybody who will listen. Why do you love the man so much? My father died when I was five. I didn't know any father, but uh, he, he, he kind of, he didn't know it, of course, but he kind of took that place in my, my life. That's the reason that I'm still here. Almost two-thirds of his life devoted to Rayburn and the legacy, but his relationship to the library site goes back even further. I've known him since the early 40s, 1940s. He was a janitor at Duncan School, and I was a student there. And the Duncan School was located here where the Sam Rayburn Library is located. And his name, they called him then Smiley Delaney because he always had a smile for everybody. He's always printing off little jokes and stuff on the internet that comes through to him. Somebody mails them to him and he always gives them to me because he says he knows I'll enjoy them. Of course, history is an all serious business. Like I told you a while ago, I was born when the Dead Sea was only sick. And, uh, <laughs> and even though Delaney officially retired from full-time work back in 2002, he still takes his place here seriously, and those that know him say they wouldn't have it any other way. I'll tell you about Mr. Delaney. He's going to be like Mr. Sam Rayburn. He's not going to be replaced. He's leaving too big a pair of shoes to, you know, the other people to take the job, but they won't replace him. If I can stay alive, I, I guess I'll come down here every day that they won't let me. They haven't run me off yet. In fact, they paid me for a long time. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you at the Sam Raven Library. It's a, you see things here you won't see anywhere else. In Bonham, Charlie Haldeman, First News.